you're asking about the book. And uh, this is the second volume in, on oil of the, in management in the Arab region. And this one uh, takes the focus on fiscal policy management because the, the Arab world of the Gulf countries and especially, but all the oil countries in the region have fixed exchange rates, which means that monetary policy can't be used. You've got to just defend fixed, uh, fixed exchange rates. So therefore, all the policy is in the hands of fiscal policy. And so fiscal policy and its management is very important. So then what we try to do is look at how, on, in general, how is the management, fiscal policy and, and like uh, things, handling especially the oil revenues. And our analysis is that it's not very good. And uh, the weakness, then, then the next sort of question is, what's really the main weakness? Why is that? Why can't, with oil revenues, shouldn't you be better off? You can do a lot of things. But the big problem is with volatility that because of the oil prices so in the last couple of years been a little special because the oil prices haven't varied that much but in the earlier years with this volatility the oil prices when the oil prices would go up the regimes lying behind the government would want to somehow spend a lot to better their friends and make everybody feel good make the citizens feel we can support the government and everything uh, and then when oil prices are low they're they're unwilling to you know cut the budgets and things like that. So it's led to, you know, not not very healthy budgets. But the main problem is this volatility, that it's that's undermined uh, things and that it leads to an allocation of expenditures which is very inefficient towards consumption, giving people jobs now for the with very nice high salaries in the public sector. And, uh, and subsidies and things like that. So then what uh, different parts of our book deal with different aspects of that, what look at the details about the budgets and how they're formed. Is it better to have uh, parliaments involved and things like that? And answer seems to be not necessarily. That then makes things even more complicated than what how do you keep things under control now that you've got a parliament and maybe you have two different branches of government and 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 then they adjust the funds the expenditures over time going beyond the budget so what good is uh, the openness in that in that respect uh, then about exchange rates and how to manage exchange rates could there be a better system and we have one proposal from one of the chapters that there could be a better system than we have that could be fixed exchange rates fixed not just against the dollar but against a, a basket of currencies including the oil price and, and then we go into a little bit of the history and interestingly enough that these same problems were there before oil so if you go back to the, before, the same countries before oil came about you see that they were subject to the same institutional kind of framework so they didn't have sort of really what you would say good quality institutions before oil uh, you can't blame the bad ones on oil but rather it was there before oil but it, but it hasn't done that much good so then we have emphasis on policies that we think kind of a list of policies that we think would help things, which include things that I know you know all about. Sovereign wealth funds is a very good kind of institution to develop, uh, and, uh, and a, number, a number of other things. And then we have three chapters in the book that are just about specific countries, and each one is a very special case and very different. Uh, we have Sudan, which is the poorest of the country, other than Yemen, but so the Yemen and Sudan are examples of where you've got low revenues. You're not getting, these aren't big oil countries, but, uh, but, but the oil, uh, but the institution management even of these smaller revenues has been very weak, and the overall institutional context in these countries is very poor, so they have done uh, poorly, very poorly, and prospects don't look that much better. Uh, then we had two other countries. One, one is the UAE, which is looked at as a star uh, performer in the terms of ability to diversify the economy, 
uh, in terms of uh, handling a lot of things, having better institutions uh, than in the other countries. But but this is a very special case where it's not the, the their budgeting is not the United Arab Emirates. It's se each separate emirate has its own and only. Certain emirates have oil, and therefore only certain emirates do a lot of spending. <laughs> okay, and then the last, the last one is uh, so UAE is oh, it's Bahrain, which is this example of where even with more sort of getting democratic institutions involved, doesn't necessarily seem to make the whole situation that much better. But but anyway, we hope that the book is going to. Uh, first of all, get people to look very carefully at, at, at budgets and the budgeting process and, and look at the institutions behind them because the budgeting process works better when you've got strong institutions.